Good afternoon from College Park. This is Wayne Viner with Terp Talk. This is Josh Stern from InsideMarylandSports.com. And this is Luke Jackson with PressBox. And it looks like it's time to buy a third microphone. And Mason's brought that up before. Guys, we saw a Maryland team that just, at least for most of the game, didn't really have a chance. But give me one or two good takeaways from that game, Josh. You're, you're asking the tough questions. Uh, the, the, easiest, the easiest big takeaway, positive takeaway, was to play the special teams. Uh, Ty Johnson's 100-yard return in the first quarter to get Maryland on the board, 14-7. to that was, the last off that was the last touchdown Maryland scored until late in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, besides that, there wasn't much, m much really to take away. But the special teams in all facets really played well, minus maybe the punting and kicking game. But the coverage teams, we just talked to Jake Funk in there, who's one of the leaders of the coverage team. Like The coverage, w coverage units were good. So, I mean, uh, that's one good takeaway, right? And a couple defenders that had uh, pretty nice games uh, in, in spite of the defense ha struggling for the most part. Chandler Burkett obviously blocked a field goal. He recovered a fumble. And then Josh Woods uh, forced the fumble, made another big play in the backfield uh, to back up Ohio State on one of their drives. Uh, and the defense, after the Terps got down 20-7, they forced two punts and really gave the Terps an opportunity to get back in the game. Obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah, it's a big snowball effect when you're dealing with a team like Ohio State. I mean, can you really criticize the defense too much when the offense can't move the ball? And can you... How much can you really criticize Max, Max Bortenschlager when he's dealing with really bad down and distances throughout the game? You, when, when, when they play Minnesota, you can see third and five. He can handle those things. He can but. handle it. And from watching the game and then sitting with intern Mason rewatching parts of the game, plays were open. Uh, it was a slow delivery. Uh, several times the ball was snapped. You could see a DJ Moore come open. Max moved or held on the ball for a second. And by then, boy, that Ohio State defense just ate him up. All right, it's enough bad stuff. It's enough bad stuff. Um, Northwestern rolls in here on Saturday, 3.30 on ESPN2. Uh, I saw ESPN, I saw Penn State play Northwestern last week. Mm -hmm. And as you guys were saying before the camera turned on, they really slowed down Barkley. Uh, do you think you're going to see Bortenschlager this week from what DJ said in the press conference? Uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, Bortenschlager would be out there. Uh, Durkin, Durkin didn't have much of an update. Um, on board and Schlager, he didn't really say what he was doing with. It sounds like, I mean, obviously you saw the play. It looked like a head injury. He, he was asked whether he was going through concussion protocol. He didn't say whether he was, but he said he would evaluate him throughout the week. And as long as he's healthy enough to play, I mean, safety's safety's the most important thing, especially when you're down to a third quarterback. But if he's healthy, he's the guy. So, I mean, I, I think I think Borden Schlager would be out there. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Yeah, and DJ really didn't give uh, away much information to us. Uh, he was pressed uh, a few times about the status of his starting quarterback on Saturday. Didn't say who his starter would be. But what he did say is that Max Bortenschlager is the starting quarterback in general. He is the number one guy. So it's not like Caleb Henderson uh, has overtaken him for that spot. Uh, and Caleb obviously didn't do anything to uh, – uh, to make you think that he earned another start with his play on uh, Saturday, even though he's kind of thrown into the fire, but he didn't complete right. any passes. Uh, and, he, and he was mostly playing with the uh, second string offense, uh, second string linemen. Uh, and Javon Leak obviously got in the game. That was one of the uh, lone bright spots was Javon Leak. Uh, There's another one. Yeah, yeah. He's really fast, so he's a talented guy. <laughs> So you're going to look for the same short passing game and run the ball that we saw against Minnesota and hope for the best. Northwestern desperately needs to win. They're 0-2 in the conference. I guess we just fell to 1-1. One one. So this is a – if we're going to get to 6, you almost have to win today, don't you? Well, it's Saturday. Yeah, it, I mean, Josh Wood said it, said it in there that it, it's a must-win game for Maryland. And you, you look at Northwestern, they're kind of in the same situation, uh, coming off two losses to top 10 teams. Uh, they got – Killed by Penn State last week, um, but they showed more fight in the previous week against Wisconsin, another top 10 team. So, I mean, it's really you really don't know exactly what you're going to get from e either of these teams with Maryland and Northwestern. They're both still kind of a 
my mysteries at this point, but I mean, they're both fighting for bowl eligibility and they both really need this win in order to kind of take that next step to get there. Because you look at Maryland's schedule a after this and I mean, there's not many other wins on the, on the table, easy wins at least. I mean, you have Indiana and um, Indiana Rutgers. Those are mm -hmm. probably the easiest games besides. And then you have Northwestern, probably the third easiest. Of course, they could get to five and seven and still uh, make a bowl game with uh, a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> parting thank you to uh, Randy Etzel. Yep. Well, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Do we keep calling it the race to six, not the race to five? But I, I, it's a good point. Uh, if the quarterback play doesn't improve, it's going to be hard to win these games. So for the folks watching, how do they find you on Twitter and uh, how do they find your articles online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Josh underscore Stern, S-T-I-R-N. And you can find my articles online at InsideMarylandSports.com, part of the 24-7 Sports uh, Network. And so you can find me at PressBoxOnline.com. I'm at Twitter at uh, Luke underscore Jackson 10. And all my, like I said, all my Terp stuff. And basketball starting up soon. And yeah. so people will be excited about that. Again, PressBoxOnline.com. And I'm Wayne with Terp Talk. And if you're watching this, you probably already found me. But if not, you can find me on Twitter at Wayne Terp. Thanks for watching, and go Terps.